Welcome to the tour video of the Resource Capacity Planner Excel template from inzara.com. This video is about the second version of this product. And in this video, we will talk about the features of this template and also take a live tour of the template itself. The purpose of this template is to provide a simple and effective solution to capacity planning. This template is designed to determine the available resource capacity, compare with the demand, and identify if there's any surplus or deficit. It also helps us to identify the specific resources which, have, which are overutilized or underutilized, and allow us to modify the resource capacity or the demand and see the impact of the changes instantly in order to meet our objectives. This planning tool can be used in different contexts. For example, a HR manager or a team manager can use this to plan their capacity of the team for the next month, or it could be a project manager who could use it to plan the capacity for the entire duration of the project, be it maybe many months or even a couple of years. The template can be used in non-corporate environments as well. Wherever there is a capacity and comparison with demand is needed, you can use this template. We can also use it in places where there are non-human resources involved. It doesn't have to be human resources or employees that we plan the capacity for. It could be even used in an industrial setup where we our resources would be machines. Now here's the framework that we use in this template. So on the left side is the input that we enter in the template and the right side is the plan that the template will automatically build and provide us with, which will help us identify the overutilized and underutilized resources. And then we can then use that information to tweak the inputs again in order to meet our objectives. Here's a quick snapshot of the dashboard that will get automatically created for us using the data we enter. And then we also have a calendar view which will provide either daily, weekly, or monthly, or quarterly, or annual the capacity or the demand or the surplus. So what we're seeing right now is the surplus or the deficit by skill group. So each of the skills how much surplus or deficit we have every week in terms of number of hours. And you can customize this um, calendar very, very easily. So now let's go and take a live look at the template. Okay, so here's our template and we begin with the setting sheet where we can enter a specific planning period. The template can support up to two years of planning period. And then you can choose the weekends, whether you, um, these are the days where your organization will not work and the capacity will be zero. And then you can also enter a series of holidays for your company, where again, the capacity will become zero. And then the projects, so you can manage multiple projects in this template. So you'll enter the list of project names. You will also enter the list of skill groups. So each resource, will be capable of doing certain skill. And so we are defining the skills involved in this entire capacity plan. And then we go to the resources sheet where we enter each resource, make sure that the, you, the names of the resources are unique. That is a requirement in this template. And then the resource can start at any date and then they can also finish their work at any date. This is the date when the resource will no longer be available to the projects. And so the end date is optional, but if the resource is a limited time resource, then you will enter a start date and an end date. Then we have the standard working hours for each weekday. So in this case, for example, this resource is available to work four hours every weekday from Monday to Friday. And this can vary by each resource. So each resource can, can have their own schedule of work um, and uh, the template will support that. Then we assign a resource to a specific skill group and this skill group list is what we entered in the setting sheet. And so now it will allow us to actually choose a skill for each resource. And then you can also choose a project to each of the resource. And these, the projects and the skill group lists come from here. And then the cost per hour is how much it's costing for each of those resources per hour of work, and this again can vary for each resource. So it provides you a lot of flexibility and freedom to have um, varying numbers for each of these resources. 
Now, the next thing we're gonna enter is the vacation or overtime. And here we will enter a resource, specific resource, and then when, uh, how many hours and when are they gonna take vacation or overtime. If you enter a positive value, that means they're going to be working overtime, meaning increase in capacity. If they take a vacation, you will enter that in negative number, and that means the capacity will decrease. You can enter a series of dates. For example, this uh, 20th Jan to 23rd Jan, this specific resource is going to be taking an additional hour of overtime. So that means four days of one hour each, totally four hours of capacity is going to be added to us. And similarly, you can enter for the same resource can take many different vacation days or if the uh, or different resources are taking, you will enter them again separately. If you actually have only one day of vacation or overtime, you will enter the start date and end date to be the same date. Now, the next sheet we go is the demand sheet. So now we have entered the capacity. Now we need to enter the demand. Um, the demand, we have three required fields. So the date of the demand, the resource who is going to be working on that specific task, and then number of hours of task. So here we are saying this specific resource customer service rep nine will have to do six hours of work on July 5th. These are the three required fields. The fourth one is optional. You can enter specific details about that task that the person is gonna do on that date, uh, but that's optional. The other thing to keep in mind is that you can provide daily or you can even provide multiple tasks per day to a resource. Um, you can also do a weekly. For example, if, if all you want to ensure is a weekly capacity plan, then you can enter one row per week for a resource. So for example, in this week of July 5th, this resource will work 30 hours on this task. So you could put that in there. But keep in mind that the granularity in which you're entering the demand is the granularity that you will be able to pro see the reports for. So if you're, if you're entering very detailed daily level of data, that means you will be able to see daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual, all of those. But if you enter only one record per week for each resource, then you will, you will not be able to get a daily view. You'll only be able to get a weekly, monthly, and um, quarterly, annually. So the granularity that you enter will determine how much granular the dashboards and the calendar will provide. So that's how flexible the template is to accommodate different scenarios and also to adapt to your needs. Okay, these columns are calculated, so please do not edit them, please do not modify them or remove them. They are very important to the functioning of the template. Now we have entered the capacity and the demand. Now let's, it's time to look at the output that is automatically calculated for us. So this is the dashboard and this dashboard uses pivot tables and so it's very important that you refresh your calculations after you enter the data or modify the data in the input sheets. So you'll come here and hit refresh all and that will refresh the calculations in the template. Now the dashboard has a lot of information. Let me just go through and explain briefly about them. So the summary metrics, there are four projects that we are planning the capacity for. There are 10 different skills involved and 100 resources. So there is a limit of 100 resources by default in this template. That limit can be extended. I can put an, a separate video on how to extend it, but by default, there is a limit and that is 100 resources. There are 34 resources who are actually overutilized and 63 who are underutilized in this case. So this is very important. So if you have overutilized resources, that means that you're, you have um, some tasks that will not be done because the, the capacity of the uh, resources can only meet to a certain extent and you have extra tasks that need to be done. So this is very important. Underutilized means you have a lot of capacity available, but they're not actually doing any work. That is also not ideal from a cost perspective, but um, different um, business scenarios will give more importance to overutilized versus underutilized. So the template is not making any judgment on those. The template will only show how many are overutilized and underutilized. And then it will show the total hours and capacity, total hours and demand. Is there a surplus or deficit? And then what's the utilization rate? The same metrics are also available from a cost perspective. And uh, then we have overutilized and underutilized tables. So the, from a project level, so project B, for example, there are 12 resources who have 
totally 1,106 hours of capacity, but they are actually overutilized by 3,212. So that's additional to the 1,106. They've been assigned to task for 3,212 more hours. That is not going to happen. So we need to address this. This is at a project level. And similarly, a project can also have underutilized resources. So keep in mind that a project can, for example, Project B has 12 resources who are overutilized and 24 resources who are under, under underutilized. And um, that means that there is an option for you to move the tasks between the resources as long as they have the skill set to do those tasks. And so the next table is by skills. And here you can see that for a specific skill group, how many resources have overutilized um, and then how many resources are underutilized. The last table, this is the more important, most important one, because this tells you which resources specifically have overutilized and which, which resources are underutilized. And if, for example, we see a specific project like project, let's take project B, you can filter this dashboard to only show project B data. And now you'll be able to see 12 resources who are overutilized and 24 who are underutilized. And you see, let's say, for example, HR, they have three resources who are overutilized. So you can filter down to HR. And now you can see those three resources who are overutilized and four of them who are underutilized. HR Analyst 1 has 353, they need, it needs more, 353 more hours, whereas there is a HR Analyst who has 2,800 hours of unutilized hours. So there is a, you know, easy way you can assign some of the tasks that you have assigned to HR Analyst 1 to HR Analyst 7, which will enable you to make sure that the tasks assigned to HR Analyst 1 will be completed. So this is how you can actually use this dashboard to quickly take decisions on how to modify the assignment of the resources uh, or the task to resources and thus enable you to um, not have any overutilized resources. And similarly, you can use the similar approach to reduce the underutilized resources as well. So the dashboard allows you to filter by skill or by specific resource or by project or combination of any of these. So you can also select multiple values in each of these slicers um, and then they are, it's very interactive. And then when you go towards the right, you will see the charts which will provide you project level, capacity versus demand, uh, skill group level, and also resource level. Uh, obviously, we have 100 resources. There is a lot of data. But once you filter them, you will be able to see you know, much fewer uh, resources, which will become easier to read. Um, and uh, again, here we are using 100 resources totally. Um, and um, the values displayed is the demand. And then you'll have the capacity shown in a lighter color, demand in a darker color. And you will also be able to see the same uh, charts for cost information. So the left one is hours, the right one is cost. Okay, now we have covered the dashboard, so now it's time to go to the calendar view. The dashboard um, provides you an aggregate view. So overall, during the planning period, the planning period we are looking at is um, July 2018 to June 2020. So during that period, over the course of the period, are we meeting the demand or not? That is what the dashboard would say. But the calendar will actually provide you day by day or week by week. So for example, even though overall uh, we are able to meet the uh, demand, so let's, let me choose it by resource. So you can see by resource, um, you will see some resources are having positive or I mean surplus, we are looking at surplus deficit, um, and then some resources have deficit. Uh, and also in, interesting to note that sometimes overall you may think that a specific resource has surplus capacity, but during certain weeks they, they may have a deficit and certain weeks they may have capacity. So at the end of the planning period they will catch up and they will have surplus, but during certain weeks they may be behind. So that may be very important to your planning um, scenario. So that is where the calendar would come in very, very helpful to break it down the entire duration into time periods. And it, the, the, the calendar has a lot of uh, options. So you can, you can choose to view resources. You can choose to view project level data. You can also view skill groups. You can also choose to say, I want to see the capacity 
or I want to see the demand, or you may want to see the surplus deficit. You can also choose to show cost instead of hours, and you can just change it to cost, and now you'll see the cost amounts. Um, the finally, you can, let me put it back to hours, and finally, you can also get uh, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual. So daily will actually switch to every day. You can see up to 53 days. That's the limit that is set up. And then if you go weekly, you will go 53 weeks and that will give you an entire year. And then if you go monthly, you will be able to see all the months because you the template can handle up to two years. That is like 24 months of uh, planning. And then um, if you do quarterly, then you'll see the eight quarters. And if you go to annual, you'll only have two years, and so you'll see that. So the template is able to take the data that we have entered and gives you all these different views, which, which can be tailored to meet your specific uh, requirements. So this is the calendar sheet, which is fully automated, and then the dashboard sheet that is also fully automated. So now we have kind of covered all the inputs and the output of the template and how you can use it to improve your capacity planning. Let's just wrap it up with um, some of the requirements and also the highlights of this template. Highlights of the template, it's very simple, simplified data entry, and it's a, it's a simple Excel spreadsheet with no macros involved. And then the automated dashboard and the calendar view and the cost calculation, nicely set up so that you can export as PDF or print it. Um, and then the practical functionality um, is to allow you to aggregate the data in many different ways and then provide you the easily um, changeable planning units and also the company holidays and customizable weekends are supported and the resource can also start at any day and end at any day. Um, the limitations to recap are two years of planning period is the maximum and 100 resources maximum 100 skill groups and 100 projects um, are the limits uh, and they can be extended. I'll put a separate video on it. Um, no task scheduling feature. So it's very important to understand that the demand is being entered by the user specifically by date and assigned to the resource. The template will not actually assign the resource or template will not actually um, schedule the work to be done. Um, the scheduling of the work is to be done is actually done in a separate template. If you're interested in that feature, please uh, look for the project planner template. Um, and then the requirements for the template are, you would need Excel for Windows in 2010 or later version and Excel for Mac 2011 or later version. And then um, the benefits again are very straightforward. You have a much streamlined process of planning your capacity. It'll save a lot of time because you don't have to um, calculate, you don't have to spend all the time doing that. The template simplifies the data entry and also automates a lot of the output, including the dashboard and the calendar. You will also save a lot of money because it's a one-time fee for the template, not a monthly uh, subscription. And also, all of this is within the familiar Excel, and that means that you can add another sheet if you would like to store some other data you may want. Uh, it's easily extendable that way. And then also the template comes with the password to unlock. So if you're if you're an advanced user of Excel, you can extend the template um, by adding your own formulas as well. For more details, please visit the product page at inzara.com. And you can also email us at support at inzara.com if you have any questions. In the next video, we'll be doing a step-by-step -step demo of how to enter data in this Resource Capacity Planner Excel template. If you like our videos on Excel templates and Excel, please subscribe to the channel to get notified of future videos. Thank you very much for watching this video.